Welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve hardware recommendations, benchmarks, and videos you can't find anywhere else. Today is the biggest GPU benchmark drop I've ever had. And the sole reason that it exists is a guy named Orrin Clay who reached out to me, can I contribute? And I thought, well, okay. Turns out this guy is a true polymath. So for instance, uh, yeah, he wrote the score for, you know, this film here on his homepage. Check it out at orinclay.com. Blew me away. Uh, and then I see the giant benchmarks button he had directed me to and the source data. And here is where we're getting all of our data. Now, some things to be aware of. For one, the base system it's running on is a 3900X with 64 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. That is some quick stuff. DaVinci Resolve 16.2, and we're going to be running six different graphics cards, we, Orin, five times each, plus five times for each individual test. Then he averaged them, found the deltas, calculated the standard deviations. Y yeah, no, I'm not kidding. This guy did an amazing amount of work so that we as a community could understand what really makes a difference in generations of graphics cards? Talking about that, we're going to a 980 Ti, a 1080 Ti, a 2080, a 3070, a 6800, and then two 6800s. Let's look at those numbers. Jumping into the scores, we're looking here at the overall score. Note this is not frame rates, this is score, and it's been abstracted from the frame rates by the Puget Systems benchmark. However, it gives you a relative scale on which you can see and expect in this benchmark. Obviously the 6800 is winning, that's good, it's the most expensive card in this test. If we were to pair a 3080 or 3090 in here, that would be fantastic. Right up above you'll see links to videos I've done using this benchmark on those, however the base system was different, and that's why I'm not showing them in this graph. That's $580 MSRP for a single 6800. The 3070 is $499 MSRP, and the 2080 is actually probably around that or a little bit more expensive right now due to scarcity in those graphics cards. What this really tells us is that we've seen continual growth even as video editors in the graphics card generations as they've come up. And now we should jump into the individual codecs and tests to understand what the true performance implications are. For instance, if we look at it from just a basic grade perspective, this is in frames per second and yeah, there's really not that much of a difference between all of these cards. And that's because we're talking about 4K basic footage with a gentle color grade on it. Maybe it's a single LUT, maybe it's just some sort of basic curves you put to it. But what this tells us is maybe you don't need to go buy that 3090 if what you do is cut up some footage, color it, balance the sound, render it out. None of that is really going to get that much more affected by the new 6800 versus a 1080 Ti from, well, three generations ago. So if that's the case, hmm, where is the difference? Well, here you can see it with the 4K temporal noise reduction. And I've got two theories on this. You see, the NVIDIA cards are actually hurting. They're not keeping up with the AMD cards. Another bummer, though, is that the dual AMD cards really aren't paying off yet. That's an entire another $580 invested in the graphics cards that you get nothing back from in this case. There's two reasons this could happen. The first one would be that AMD put a temporal noise reduction path directly through their center of their GPU, and that's allowed it to calculate faster how to remove the bumps and stuff that you see in darker footage when your ISO gets up pretty high on your camera. And it's able to do that faster using the frames before and after the frame it's in question that it's cleaning because they've built effectively a hardware accelerated path for that function. The other thing to look at might be there's 16 gigabytes of video RAM in those two cards. There's only eight gigabytes in the 3070, eight in the 2080, and 11 in the 1080 Ti. So that could be part of the difference. I'm gonna kinda of stick to the first one though. I think that they've done something to target temporal noise reduction in their graphics card's execution path. Next, you can see that holds true when we jump to H.264. This is in frames per second, and you can see the 150 megabit H.264. This is gonna be probably a little bigger of a file than what the normal consumer camera shoots at H.264, 
but it's still the same codec, so we can get a pretty good example out of this. The lead for the 6800s does hold here. You'll notice the dual 6800 did a little bit better, but not anything that's actually out of statistical relevance, to be honest. The 6800s uh, apparently don't scale well between two cards. At least we're not seeing it yet, are we? The rest of the results hold about the same. Ah, so I went hunting. I went hunting for a difference between the 6800 and the dual 6800 configuration. Here we finally see it, and it's when we truly layer on the GPU effects. Here we've got lens flares, tint sh uh, tilt shift blurs, and a sharpen effect on top of H.264 footage. Now both the NVIDIA cards and the AMD cards have a hardware accelerated chip that sits on the die with the processor and does decoding of 150 megabit H.264. So we know that that's the difference here as long as we're using the studio version. However, that helps us isolate just a little bit more these GPU effects and see the pain that they're causing on these GPUs. And that's why we see the dual 6800 slide ahead of the single 6800 in a pretty significant way. Next, we'll look at another codec some prosumer type cameras can shoot, and that's gonna be ProRes. ProRes in a 422 basic grade, it's the same story. Used cards, looking like a pretty good bargain. The difference gets into when you're using more intense GPU-based effects. Those GPU-based effects really can create the havoc that you'll see. And so the moral of this story, everything that we're looking at, we need to understand what are you doing with your DaVinci Resolve instance? What are you doing with your footage? Are you just doing basic cut color? Or are you really getting in there creating new effects in Fusion, using those effects, using some of the more complex open FX that exist in your color page. If so, those are the operations where both during your editing series, during your editing session, in your preview windows, it'll pay off to have better hardware, and in your final render, it'll pay off. But if what you're doing is cutting up footage, if it is coloring it and just the basic work, you could overspend really easily. Another huge shout out to Oren. Uh, by the way, yeah, the music under this, he composed that too. <laughs> Amazing. All right, thank you, Oren. That was an amazing journey through ooh, about six, seven years of graphics cards. Really cool to be able to see exactly where we've come from and where we're moving, as well as the differences still in Resolve between the AMD and the NVIDIA-based systems. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and I know the subscribers really do too. If this has been really helpful to you, feel free to chip into the benchmarking fund here with Buy Me A Coffee below. Otherwise, hit like, hit subscribe. We've got a bunch more of these technology-based videos coming, and I truly appreciate you watching. Have a great day.